Hey, today we're going to talk to you about jealousy. Jealousy is one of those feelings that can creep in and just steal the joy from our lives. So we're going to be giving you some steps on how you can overcome jealousy, some ways to get it out of your life, okay? Hey, I'm Mitch at Keeping the Vows, and we're all about helping people to discover and to maintain a Christ-like marriage. And so today, um, let's just go right to our question. We do questions and answers. The thing I love about that, it keeps us relevant. It keeps us answering the questions that you actually have. Who wants to answer questions nobody's asking, right? Okay, so I would like to read the question to you that we got. How can a spouse go beyond feelings of jealousy and being left out when the other is living the dream and has the ideal job in an environment that they love and the spouse doesn't have a job in their profession and feels stuck in a place away from family and friends? Okay. First of all, let's examine where does our jealousy come from? First, uh, jealousy comes out of a lack of trust, a lack of trust in either the process of life, maybe in your spouse or in yourself. So lack of trust breeds insecurity. And once we're insecure, that creates jealousy. And we stifle these feelings because they're uncomfortable feelings. But this is the cold, hard truth about jealousy. It, and it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. In other words, we're jealous not because of someone else, but because of what we tell ourselves. So if we tell ourselves the wrong things, we will become people that are jealous. In this case of those three things I talked about, um, the lack of trust in the process of life and probably in yourself are the two things that are creating this jealousy. Here's an overview on how to look at this. Where I'm at right now is not an accident, and God has things he wants me to learn no matter what chapter of life or season that I'm in, what my circumstances are either. So whatever I'm doing, I'm to do for God's glory. So while what I'm doing right now may not consist of what I would, thought I would like to be doing or I'm wishing I would doing, it should be preparing you for how God wants to use you in the future. I'm here today at 62 years old, and I'm only here because a lot of things that happened in the past weren't my plans, and God changed them, and it, the things that I did then prepared me for who I am now, okay? So what's the solution? Well, you want to start working a little bit right now, whatever it is that you want to do for one thing. Um, so for instance, just say that you want to get a job being a dental hygienist, okay? So what I would consider doing was uh, just starting to work toward that just a little bit. Let me give you an example. I had a couple come to me, and they wanted to go to the mission field. Actually, he was ready to go to the mission field, and she wasn't ready to go to the mission field yet. So my theory is, if they're supposed to go to the mission field, God will call them both, not just one of them. So my advice to them was, look, if you think you want to go to the mission field in the future, do things right now to prepare for that future that you want to have. Well, there were a lot of things that they could do. They could uh, take, they could learn the language. In this case, it happened to be Spanish. They could um, learn about the culture. They could study for missions. There's lots of things that they could do to prepare for that. And even though they're not at the goal that maybe he wanted to be at, they're still preparing for the goal that both of them would like to be at someday. And that creates a little bit of energy, excitement, lets you know there's light at the end of the tunnel. And I'm working toward that elusive goal that seems like I can't reach it right now. That's something you can do. So life is a journey, and this journey is made up of chapters. And you may not be at your favorite chapter right now, but you're, those chapters can be coming. So put off self-gratification today for a happier tomorrow. One of the things that you might do is start a bucket list. I have two different bucket lists. I have a bucket list of everything I've already done, which is kind of gratifying to see all the places in the world I've been and things like that. And I also have one of things that I'd like to do, which gives me hope for the future. So for instance, if say that I would want to go to, to Russia, it's a goal of mine. Well, if I want to go to Russia and it's on my bucket list, then I can start putting money away toward going to Russia, right? So I could just look at people that are traveling Russia or go look at the internet on things in Russia and be jealous and feel like, gee, I'll never make it there. Or I could start making plans toward that. So I would suggest you start making plans toward whatever it is that you want to do. Start a list and then through that list, prioritize things and then start working at things at the top of that list. It can only help. The second thing to learn is that my plans are not always best for me. I always thought that you know, if the world goes according to my plans, things are going to be good. I was recently with a person the other day and they were telling about somebody that was saying that they, on Facebook, that they had, they wanted to be happy and everything had happened in their life that would make them happy except this one thing. So they weren't going to be happy until this one thing happened. You know what? I found out that uh, God has a plan for our life and it's different than, than my plan. If we pray, God, not my will, but thine be done, what it means is, hey, God, if your will is different than my will, then my will has to give in and change and do what you want to do. So in other words, this, if my plans, I think that they'll make me happy, 
maybe they're probably not what's best for me. In fact, I can pretty much promise you my plans are not what's best for me. So God has better plans than I do. So if something comes along and my plan changes, then I'm okay with that. I'm willing to change. I'm willing to go God's way. Because whatever happens is going to make me better. I'll give you an example. Seven years ago, I had cancer. And uh, I wasn't looking forward to it. It wasn't in my bucket list. It wasn't in my plans. But because I've had cancer, I'm a much better person. I'm much more grateful for every day. I'm more grateful for my health. Uh, I've, I've lost weight. I'm taking care of my body. I'm doing a lot of things different that I didn't used to do. So I can actually look back and say, I am glad that I had cancer. By the way, I'm okay now, all right? But I'm glad that I had cancer because it made me a better person. Well, it wasn't my plan. It was God's plan. But when I found out I had cancer, what I said was, the first thing, in all honesty, I said was, I'm glad I have it instead of Kim. And the second thing I said is, how can this bring glory to Jesus? So whatever's ha wherever you're at in your life right now, if you feel you're at a dead end or something, how can that bring glory to Jesus is a good question to answer. And how is this going to prepare me for the next step in my life? You know, maybe there's a person going to come into your life that's going to teach you patience or going to teach you perseverance or going to teach you charity or teach you love or teach you understanding. And in each of these chapters or each one of these events that happen, these plans that happen, something's going to happen that's going to make you better for the future. And I think God uses that. God uses that. So also gratitude makes what we have enough. I found that if I'm grateful, then I'm more content. And so look around for the things in your life that could make you grateful, okay? As a matter of fact, jealousy is absolutely the opposite of gratitude. Jealousy is not being content for what you have. All right. The mom who feels stuck with the little kids at home, think about the lady who can't have children. Think about the lady who has to work but would rather be home with the children. You know, it, there's people out there that can't have children and they're not happy. They can, and I understand that. There's people that have to work and they have children, they're not happy. There's people that don't have to work that stay home with the children and they're not happy. Do you get a pattern here? It, what it amounts to is that we're just about as happy as we make up our minds to be. When I turned about 50, I learned that is that. I'm about as happy as I want to be for the rest of my life. The other day I went to an office for a massage and I walked in. They said, how's your day? And I said, fantastic. My day is going to be fantastic every single day. It doesn't make any difference what's going on. My happiness should not be determined by my circumstances. Now, I can be fantastic and I'm not lying to them if I say I'm fantastic and things are going wrong. My circumstances might not be great, but I'm still fantastic. It's all a mindset. It's all how we look at it. Things, things you do to combat jealousy, okay? The first thing is control the way you think. The, the best book I've ever found on that for me is a layperson's book. You, anyone can read it. And it's called Telling Yourself the Truth. It's by uh, William Backus and Marie Chapin. And the book deals with the things we tell ourselves every day. And it deals with correcting the misbeliefs that we tell ourselves. And by correcting what we tell ourselves, we become a different person. Matter of fact, the types of thoughts you have can actually change the chemical composition of your body. Think about that. If you're real negative or you're real positive, your body's in a totally different state and you can change the chemical composition of your body. If you go to our webpage at keepingthevows.com and go to our resources page, there's a place there where you can find the book. Uh, go there and if you would, uh, click there and uh, we make a small commission on it. It won't cost you a penny more, but you'll be supporting our ministry. Appreciate that. Uh, also, we have a, another YouTube video and a blog that's called Telling Yourself the Truth. I'd recommend you check that out, too, because uh, that'll really take you down the road to where you want to be with this, all right? Um, also, take a look at your friends. Um, if your friends are negative and they're not being a positive influence on you, there's a good chance you might want to back out of some of those relationships. As a matter of fact, surround yourself with people that are positive. Surround yourself with people that are going to um, enforce you and, and build you up and make you better. So exercise. Uh, it's been said as little as 10 minutes of exercise a week can be a difference to change your mindset. I, I exercise, I try to five days a week on the treadmill. I, I walk for about 40 minutes, uh, five days a week. And I have a theory that I'm only one workout away from a bad mood. Endorphins get released. And when I work out, I'm just in better shape. I'm in a better mood. It's just the way it is. So work out. Also your diet. If you stop and think about it, you know, garbage in, garbage out. What you put in your body is very important. And we don't eat a lot of foods today. We eat a lot of food-like products, things that are just processed. And try to get back to whole grains, get back to more natural foods, and you, you'll be a lot healthier. You'll be a lot happier. Uh, change the way you eat. Very important. Very important. Also, do something to contribute to your long-term goals, even if it's small. I mentioned that earlier. 
you know, go take that one class toward the goal that you want to do or go, you know, if you want to become a pharmacist, go in and befriend a pharmacist and start talking to them and just, just start learning, you know, shadow somebody in a job you want to do or something like that. And, and just start down that path of doing that. Do something small. Remember, if you're out walking, you're lapping everybody on the couch, right? So just do something small and it'll make a big, big difference. Also, help someone less fortunate than yourself. There's a saying when I when I was a kid, I heard songs, you know, across the tracks in town. In other words, there's a poor side of town. Go help someone less fortunate than yourself. And by doing so, you're going to find that your genuine happiness isn't really doesn't really happen by satisfying your impulses. But happiness happens when we help other people. So help other people. Something else, too, if you're away from family and friends, we have FaceTime, we have Skype. Um, when I was a kid, if you wanted to call another country, it might cost you know ten dollars a minute, which was a huge amount of money back then. It'd be like twenty five dollars a minute now. Silas and Grace, our son and daughter in law, blog for a living, and their blog is called ChasingFoxes.com. So they're on the road uh, all but a couple weeks a year. They're traveling the world, but there was a Saturday morning when we FaceTime with them for two and a half hours. So take advantage of that technology. You know, if you if you're away from your friends and your family, FaceTime with them. It's not that much different if you tell yourself about it. Kim and I went to Europe for five and a half weeks one time. We FaceTimed with our kids, and when we got home, we didn't even feel like we needed to run over and see them right away at their house because we'd been in touch with them a lot through FaceTime. So that's a big help, too. So a lot of it's just what you tell yourself. You could say, well, FaceTime isn't the same. Yeah, it is. It's pretty close. It's pretty close if you're honest about it, okay? And also, don't don't forget that counseling could be a good move. Uh, we're a, what are a few dollars compared to your happiness, to your mental, emotional happiness? Very, very little. So take advantage of counseling. A lot of people even have it in their insurance plans. Take advantage of it and get your counseling. You know, in summary, you ask this in your question, how can I overcome the feelings of jealousy? The feelings of jealousy. Well, feelings are a result of our thinking. And jealousy is caused by improper thinking. So happiness isn't something you feel, but instead happiness is something you do. You walk in and they say, how are you? And you say, fantastic. And when you tell yourself that, it gets through. You know, God wants us to trust him. And especially when our circumstances aren't ideal, when we're far away from home or loved ones or we're not in the ideal job, God still wants us to trust him. And you know what? He loves it when we trust him. But we can only trust him when plans aren't going our way. There's really no trust in God when plans are going our way. We're kind of on autopilot and thinking we're pretty cool and we can do things on our own. The last paragraph, I'm going to I want to read this paragraph here. And it's the one at the beginning that I gave you. And let's just see if after we've talked, if this resonates a little differently. Where we are right now isn't an accident. God has things for me to learn and wants me to glorify him. Whatever season of life or circumstances or phase that, are, that I'm in. Whatever I'm going through, I will do for his glory. While what I'm doing right now might not be what I thought I would be doing or what I wish I was doing, it's preparing me for what it is that God wants me to do and how he wants to use me for the future. So I would just encourage you not to chase happiness, but look for meaning instead. I hope that's been a help to you. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Uh, check out our blog at keepingthevows.com and look for resources there. Um, give us questions. We'll get them answered. And hit the like or subscribe button if you would. We'd appreciate that. Visit us on Facebook at Keeping the Vows. And uh, have a great day.